So we will look at band break analysis. So what we have is we have a schematic of a band break. So band are attached at to the lever at point O and B. You have a rotating drum and you have a certain portion of the band which is wound around the drum itself. So that angle is your angle of lap. Sometimes I will refer to as the wrap angle and it has to be in radians. F is the coefficient of friction. R is the radius of the drum. T is the thickness of the band and B is the width of the band. T1 is the tension that is acting in the tight side and T2 is the tension on the slack side. So the first thing is how do we decide which one is the tight side and which one is the slack side. So it's very simple. In this current example the drum is rotating clockwise. So what we do is we simply say that if the bands are kept fixed and stationary at these two points. If the drum rotates clockwise, what happens to this portion of the band? So you will notice that as this rotates clockwise, this band is pulled. So when a band is pulled, it naturally becomes the tight side and the other one becomes the slack side. If this drum was rotating in the counterclockwise direction, so you would notice that this band would have been pulled and this band would have been pushed so they would have interchanged so this one would have been tight side and this one would have been your slack side so now let's look at the governing equations so the tension ratio t1 over t2 is equals to exponential f theta where f is the coefficient of friction theta is the lap angle which is given in radians e is your exponential this is not a parameter e but exponential which is inverse of your natural log your braking force is just basically the difference between T1 minus T2. Your torque is force times the distance. So your braking force times the distance which is your radius. Power is nothing but your braking torque times the angular velocity which is omega is 2 pi n upon 60. P max which is the maximum lining pressure is given by T1 divided by Br and your maximum stress in the belt is given by T1 divided by Bt. Bt is the cross-sectional area of the belt so width times the thickness gives you the cross-sectional area of the belt so you'll see that in equation 11 and 12 you have t1 in both the cases because t1 is the maximum tension that the belt will experience so tight side will have a higher tension than the slack side and the unit for tension is basically newtons let's look at example 3 so you need to understand that the schematic of the band brake will always be given to you you don't need to worry about this so the drum diameter is 600 mm which is rotating at 200 revolutions per minute the coefficient of friction is given as 0 0.25 the lap angle is 270 degrees and it says that we need to calculate the pull necessaries such that the the brake is able to absorb 35 kilowatt of power so this is the schematic so force p is acting over here the drum is rotating in the counterclockwise direction so you will notice that at l this band is pulled so this becomes your tight side and this becomes your slack side so now the other thing is the first thing that you need to do is we need to calculate our tension ratio so lap angle was given as 270 converting it to radians you get 4.712 radians and then your tension ratio t1 over t2 is simply exponential f theta so it's not that exponential to the power of f theta it is exponential f theta and you will end up with a value of 3.25 the power that was given was 35 kilowatt and power is nothing but your braking torque times to your angular velocity so we can solve for our braking torque so your braking torque equates to 1671.13 newton meter and when we have found our braking torque, we know that our braking torque is nothing but T1 minus T2 times the radius. Radius of the drum is 300 mm. So we obtain an equation which says that T1 minus T2 is equals to 5570.43 Newton. And we know that your tension ratio is given as T1 over T2 is 3.25. So therefore, T1 is nothing but 3.25 T2. So substitute this value in the equation here and you can solve for t2 and we can get t1 now what happens is in order to solve for your force p we need to draw a free body diagram and what we do is 
when we draw a free body diagram we simply represent our liver arm we can simply represent our force p how do we represent the tension on the tight side and the slack side so they will act in the same direction as the band that is attached at o and b so this is your t1 and this is where your t2 is so this is p that's t2 and this is t1 so most of you will be asking me as to how i indicated the direction of the forces for t1 and t2 to be in this direction so the rule is very simple the force acting in the belts will always act away from the point where the band is connected to the lever so once more the force acting on the band will always act away from the place where it is attached onto the liver arm so in this case the band was attached to this liver oc at this point o and b so what happens is at this point the force is acting away from b and at here it is also acting away from o now what happens is some of you will say that why i cannot indicate it is acting upwards because there is no band over here on top so the band is only attached over here so the only way it can act away from b is acting in a downward direction again acting in a downward direction so this becomes your fulcrum you can take some of moments in order to calculate our force p now what happens is just because of the geometry that is given to us just because of the geometry that is given to us we know that okay if we take sum of moments if we take sum of moment about point o over here so what we have is we have p this is where T2 is and that's your point O. So if we take some of moments about point O, we know that okay T2 is going to cause a moment clockwise, so it's negative, and P is going to cause a moment in the counterclockwise, it is going to be positive. We know the distance O to C to be 750, but we don't know the distance. We don't know the distance O to D because we know that T2 is acting at a distance OB from O. But we know that your moment, in order to calculate moment, it is force times the perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance is this one, and which is represented by OD over here. So we know the distance from O to B is 125. And the geometry says that the distance from O to E and E to B is 62.5 mm. So this is what is given over here. Then we can find OD because OD, O to E is 62.5, D to E is 62.5. So it's a right angle triangle. So you can find the hypotenuse which is OD which was 89.33 mm. So now we take moment about point O. So what happens is P causes a moment in the counterclockwise direction so it's positive and t2 causes a moment counter uh, clockwise so it's negative so rearranging and you'll find that the force p that is required for this particular band break is 291.77 newton now what we'll do is we'll just simply move on to another type of band break which is a differential band break so in a differential band break the major difference is that the bands are attached to the lever once more but none of these points of attachment are your fulcrum so let's go back to the previous example so here i would see that you just have points of attachment at o and b and one of them will become your fulcrum so here maybe b is the fulcrum here you can see b is the fulcrum for this particular example 
Now when we look at differential band break, you'll see that the fulcrum is independent of the two bands that are attached at I and B. Now what happens is, again we can take moments, so for instance if the drum is rotating clockwise, so this is your tight side, that is your slack side, if the drum is rotating counterclockwise, this becomes your tight side, that becomes your slack side. So what we do is we can again take moment, let's say we draw our free body diagram over here once more. So that's force P, that's your fulcrum O, right? So that's T1 acting away from the lever arm in the bend direction. So this is your T2. So if I take moments about O, I can say that, okay, T2 causes a counterclockwise, so a positive moment, T1 causes a clockwise moment, so negative, P will cause a moment in the clockwise direction, so negative, I can do sum of moments about point one and come up with the equation. Same thing you can do over here. So in both the cases, what will happen is you will end up with equations 13 and 14, and these equations are only applicable to this scenario. So with respect to whichever senior is given to you, you can always write this equation. So if P is acting upwards, so maybe it changes, it is a positive uh, moment going in the counterclockwise direction. So you make just some changes. So your distance P times L, L is the distance from the fulcrum to point of application of point P at C, is simply equal to T2 times uh, I. So the distance O, distance O to O to A is A and distance O to B is B. So T2 times A minus T1 times B. So in the counterclockwise direction, the equations change. So it is PL is equals to T1 A minus T2 B. So what happens is when the frictional force helps to apply the brake, it is said to be self-energizing brake. When the force P is negative or zero, then the brake is self-locking. Thus, for differential band brakes and for clockwise rotation of the drum, the condition for self-locking is when T2 times the distance A is less than equal to T1 times distance B. So this is with respect to the figure that we saw in the previous slide and this is this. And for counterclockwise direction this situation is true so depending on the orientation of the band brake the forces the direction of the forces you should be able to obtain these equations quite easily